All right, this is my buddy Odie, and as you can see, he's kind of demanding that I pet him. Another, we just got done talking about some rules that we can incorporate. One of the rules I would have is anytime he puts his paw on top of your arm like he just did, you immediately stop petting him. It's not a punishment, it's a consequence. When you put his paw on your arm, he's trying to tell you what to do. Keep petting me, keep, keep giving me your attention. Well, if I do what he wants, then I'm telling him, you're, yes, you're the boss of me. So, Odie, come. So one of the things that I've learned is that a lot of people, while petting your dog is a great thing, sit, Odie, sit, sit. See how he stopped doing that? Mm -hmm. So your timing has to be right away. Um, <laughs> you're, gonna, you're a challenge. Uh, that's all right. I'm just, just as determined you are, buddy. So I've learned, uh, or basically the way I look at it, petting our dogs is our way of paying the dog. Mm -hmm. So I want to pay Odie for doing the things that I want him to do, not for the things he wants me to do. So if he scratches at me or nudges at me and tells me to pet him, and I do, then I'm telling him he's the boss of me. So what I do is every time the dog nudges at me or scratches at me or nudge, uh, noses me, I tell it, I give it a counter order. I ask it to sit or to lie down. So down, down, down. Is he no down? Yep. Down. So as soon as he goes into the position that I want, that I say the command word. Now one of the things that confuses a lot of dogs is that guardians talk too much to their dog. Oh, Odie, you lay down. You lay down as soon as I ask you the third time. You're the smartest dog ever. I didn't even use the command word in that whole sentence. The, down, the command word is down, or whatever it is, but I said laid down. And so for him, just like us, like if we don't speak a foreign language, if somebody comes up to us and says two words that we happen to know of that foreign language, we're able to absorb it. Mm -hmm. But if somebody comes up and says a big paragraph to us, it's too much. We, our brain can't process it. So the more words we use when we're rewarding a dog, the more confusing it gets for the dog. So what I would recommend is every time he does something you want to do, make sure your finger's not in the way. It shouldn't, I don't oh, think okay. it is. Um, uh, is that uh, if he sits, I pet him and I say the word sit. I don't say good sit, I don't say good boy. Those are for us, so we don't need to hear it. All I want to reinforce is what the command word is. I want the command word tied with the action. So within three seconds of him sitting, I'm petting him and saying the word sit, and that's it. So from now on, what I would recommend you guys do is stop petting him altogether. No more petting unless he does something for you first. Asking him to sit or lie down is really not asking very much, but it helps introduce the concept of if I want something from the humans, I have to earn it. That's going to help his self-esteem, help him feel better about getting attention. Just like the child who has to get a job at the gas station to earn enough money to buy a jalopy car versus the kid whose parents have a ton of money and buy him a brand new BMW. The kid with a BMW trashes it because he didn't earn it. The kid with a jalopy washes that thing once a week, vacuums it, waxes it even though it's rusted all, all the hell because he takes pride in it because he earned it himself. He feels accomplishment. Dogs have the same ability. So what I would recommend you do is again stop petting him, and if you see one, if you see your your spouse petting him, then you say what I usually recommend is the word paycheck. So if you hear paycheck, you just stop petting the dog and ask him to sit, even if you asked him to sit before, and then you ask him to sit again and pet him and say sit, and then you can tell your spouse, hey, I actually asked him to sit before he came in. He sat, I petted him, and then he got up, and then he walked, and then he didn't see it. But if you argue about it, then he sees that you're on a different page. If you immediately stop, it gives us another opportunity to pet him again, and it helps the dog feel uh, or it helps uh, the dog see you guys as being on the same page. Now what's going to happen eventually is he's going to come up and start sitting in front of you and say, look, I'm sitting. Should you be petting me? And the answer is yes. Now I actually call this, at least when you can, I call this passive training. So I taught my Dalmatian to stretch by every time he stretched on his own. I didn't ask him to. He stretched and I would pet him and reward him and I said the word stretch. After a while I said stretch and he would stick his butt in the air and wag his tail and yawn at the end on command because I just let him do it and then rewarded him after the fact. So you're going to kind of transition into that. Uh, but if you ignore him, then he's going to start pawing you and nudging and doing the other things that he did. Petting with a purpose is the easiest thing that you can do that will have the biggest impact on your dog. And if you get into a habit where both of you do it, for the rest of your dog's life, every time you pet him, you go through a little mini dog obedience training session without thinking about it or spending any real time. The way I like to do it is I like to use a hand motion to put the dog into a sit. Odie. it. See how I did that? Mm -hmm. Now, when a dog is proud about what he's done, his nose is parallel to the ground or tilted upward. 
So I like to scratch a dog under the chin if possible. Now if his butt is here, his head's over there, you can scratch his butt too. But whenever possible, try to pet him under his chin because that facilitates that nose up, that proud orientation. Petting him on top of their head has a tendency to get it down and an insecure dog to look down. So it's a little minor, uh, easy thing that you can do that will help him feel better about himself.